Hello everybody and welcome to Chef Glenn's Kitchen, where you can do it. Learn and love to cook with a world champion. Today's subject, perfect sauce making. I'm going to talk about the three most commonly used thickening agents in the kitchen, both professionally and at home. We have a roux, flour and clarified butter. We have a bourmonier, kneaded butter, which is whole butter and flour. And then we have cornstarch. Let's talk about the most commonly used, a roux. Now, I recommended in a previous video, uh, fats, oils and vinegars, that you have clarified butter, otherwise known as liquid gold. So if you want to see how to make this, go back and find my fats, oils and vinegars video. You'll have clarified butter. Your cooking all around the kitchen will taste better. Can you make a roux with other fats? Yes, of course. Vegetable oil, olive oil, drippings from a roast, any fat that will mix with the flour will thicken a sauce. So what we're going to do with, to begin, begin with here is I'm going to do two different uses of a roux. Now a roux, approximate measurements, two tablespoons of clarified butter or liquid gold, and three to four tablespoons of flour. We use bread flour in the industry, but I'm going to use all-purpose flour here because that's what you probably have. And that'll thicken approximately two cups of liquid. I have to be honest. I've never measured a roux in my life. I've put some fat in the pan. I've added some flour. I know what it's supposed to look like. I had to measure this last night and thicken up some water to see what the ratio was so I could tell you for easy, perfect sauce making. Now, the other thing I want to tell you about is I'm not going to use a whisk. I am just going to use wooden spoons. This is very easily done if you do it right. In the black handle pot will be the proper way to use and incorporate a roux. In the silver handle pot will be the wrong way and how you get lumps in your sauce. So let's begin. In each pot, I'm going to put two tablespoons of clarified butter. I have the heat on very low. A roux you want to cook a little bit before you start adding any liquids. It helps get the starchy flavor out of your product. And now I'm going to add some all-purpose flour. And we're going to go for a medium thickness, so we're just going to go with approximately three tablespoons in each one. Now the reason we want to use an oil or a fat in making our roux is because they will coat each individual granule of starch in the flour itself which will make the thickening and the dissolving into your liquid much 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 easier. So same things going on in both pots right now. I'm cooking my flour and my clarified butter. Oh, that one's just a little bit on the thick side. We want to make them the same so you can see what goes wrong when it does go wrong. <clears throat> so I'm basically using this ratio right here, right now. Now, there are other ways to use a roux. I am going to show you the easiest and the most foolproof way possible. So after you've cooked your roux for a few minutes, which will help get rid of the starch and pasty flour when you're done, you're going to take the good roux, this one here in the black handle, and we're just going to set that off to the side for a few minutes. Ideally, the flour will thicken to its maximum capacity and capabilities if the two environments are are close to the exact same temperature as possible. If you were to add cold liquid to a hot roux, you can get rid of the lumps, but you're going to have to beat it with a whisk. So what we're going to do here is, we're going to do one where I'm taking the roux pot off of the heat, going to let this cool down for a few minutes, and then we're going to keep this one hot, and you're going to see that it's very hard to get rid of the lumps there. So I'll be back in two minutes as soon as my roux pot has cooled. Okay, the roux has cooled a little bit, but I'm going to start with the wrong one first, and that is where I did not cool the roux down. If you take oil and heat it up, 
it's going to get very hot, a lot hotter than boiling water. If you add a flour to that and heat it up, it's going to get even hotter than that. So watch what happens when I don't cool the roux in the pot and I add my li liquid to the pot itself. Here we go. This is the worst thing you can see in sauce making. Nuclear boiling. It's not going to work. Look at those lumps. When the students in the college used to do this, we said, oh look, you made a sauce with dumplings. I don't think that's the way the recipe was supposed to turn out. Now in the proper pot that I've cooled for about four minutes now, I will do the same thing. Add a ladle full of water and you don't see the nuclear boiling in there. Now we're going to stir this gently until it becomes what we called homogenized. There were two ingredients in there, a roux and a stock. And we're just going to stir this until you can't see the difference between the two and they've become one new ingredient. I'm just going to go back here for a second. Okay, back to our good pot here. <clears throat> get it to a nice paste, kind of like a light. In this case with our, our chicken stock, brown chicken stock, a peanut buttery light color. And then I can add another ladle full of liquid. And again, I'm going to stir that in until it's homogenized. One common question Students ask when they come to the college, do real chefs make gravy? We'll get back to the answer to that at the end. I've already given you a hint earlier in the video. We're just going to stir this with the spoon until our sauces disappear, or our lumps disappear, sorry. Our good roux in this pan, our bad roux in here. We're going to add another ladle full of gravy, it's our stock, sorry. I'm going to stir that up. And it doesn't matter how much I stir with the wooden spoon. Some of those uh, lumps are just not going to disappear. And with the same amount of liquids added to two pots, you can see that the starch has been totally utilized in this one. And in this one, there's a whole bunch of starch being caught up in those little balls. It's not thickening to what it's supposed to be. So add another ladle here. We'll add another ladle here and we're just going to give it a little bit more heat now that we've got some liquid going on in there. How's our lumpy sauce doing? Oh yeah, look at that. Not a very happy sauce, not really. It's not thickening either. How's our good sauce doing? Look at that. Oh, look at that. It's that thing of beauty. So let's remember here what we were talking about. The proper way to use a roux is to cook your roux in your pot, cool the roux before adding your hot liquid to it. In this one, we did not cool it and you can see we have what a lot of people make at home and they run it through a strainer but believe it or not you're going to taste starch on raw starch in that sauce it's not going to taste as good as this one here does so we're just going to take these and put them off to the side for a few minutes so I can show you how to make a couple of other different sauces in this pot we have just some stock we're going to heat it up and we are going to use a bourmignet. What bourmignet means is, translation, kneaded butter. So think of it like as a dough. So what I've done here is this is just equal amounts of whole butter, not liquid gold, whole butter, and all-purpose flour. And I've just mixed it together so it's a nice paste. It's nice and smooth. And this is actually a sauce where you want to use a whisk because once this hits the liquid, a spoon won't break it up and dissolve it into the, the liquid fast enough. So we are going to use a whisk. The nice thing about a bourmignet, you can make it. I didn't measure this, I just made it. If you don't use it all, wrap it and put it in your fridge. It'll last for months. 
with my whisk and I'm just going to stir it in to my gently simmering pot here and as it breaks free from the whisk you're going to see that it's starting to slightly thicken the sauce and we're just going to let that simmer for a minute and then we'll add some more bourmignet. On the last one we are going to use a cornstarch thickener and we are going to show you the difference between an opaque sauce which is the flour based and a clear jelly like sauce. Let's add a little bit more. Now cornstarch is a refined starch and it does not require any cooking time and it will thicken instantly <coughs> upon hitting the heat. I don't measure cornstarch. I just put some in a container. You want to mix it with a cold liquid. I have here what's called a ball whisk. What the balls do that a round whisk won't do, the balls get right into the corners of your, of your pan and they make sure to thicken all of it. So into a simmering liquid with the cornstarch, just put some in, just put a little bit in. The rule in cooking is you can always add more, but you can't add less. Once it's in there, it's in there. So put a little bit in, stir it, see what you get. Just keep an eye on it. We're going to watch that simmer for a second. We're going to go back to our bourmignet here. We're going to see how that's doing. Look at that. Nice and smooth. No lumps. And that's a probably a good consistency. Everybody likes different thicknesses in their sauces. More flour, less flour, depends on what your use is. But I would suggest that that, with a Bermanier, is a nice consistency sauce. So we're going to take that one and put it to the side and mark that one done and perfect. Let's get to our cornstarch. I want it a little thicker. Now, when you go to a restaurant and you order prime rib of beef au jus, au jus means own juice, which is water consistency. When you put that on a plate, it's going to go to the vegetables, it's going to go to the starches, it's going to go to whatever else you have on there. If you make a julie, lie means to slightly thicken much better product when you ladle that on the plate it stays with the meat and it doesn't go to the vegetables and starches and rices and what have you so this here would be a julie it's not thick as a gravy it's just thickened just a little bit and we're going to be happy with that and we're just going to look at the two different ones here now flour based whether it's our Bourmignet our flour based which is our roux and our cornstarch opaque opaque shiny and clear you have to know what you want in the end result before you decide which thickening agent to use Well, please hit the thumbs up down below, subscribe, put something in the comments, suggestions, recommendations, requests. Once again, thanks for watching Chef Glenn's Kitchen. Happy cooking.